Okay, everybody, we're back. I'm going to have to forward here up to the slide that we left off at, which is the strike and dip of a geologic feature. Okay, as you're looking at this, to get down this concept of strike and dip, um, what you're looking at here is a block of geologic beds. That block of beds is actually tilted, okay, um, relative to the horizontal surface you see around it, which would be down in this area. Um, and again, in order to define how this thing is oriented out in, in, in the geologic environment, in the Earth environment. Uh, people use something referred to the attitude of that geologic feature, and that attitude is defined by its strike and dip. Okay? Now, in order to get maybe what might be a better sense of what the strike is, if you think about this horizontal plane here, okay, as is being shown there, um, think about what would happen if we flooded this area from up here to, to the level of this plane with water. Okay? So that everything below that plane was now basically just a big lake. Right? And this is the surface of that water body. Well where that water intersects the top of this bed here, okay, that's referred to as the line of strike. Okay? Now in order to set its orientation, we determine what the line of the strike is relative to true north. So if you figure if this is the trend of the line of strike, you figure following that same trend is coming through here, you know, that would be like, uh, what, 45, 50 degrees to the east of north, okay? So in this case, looking at this, you know, that line of strike is about north, let's say 45 degrees to the east of north, okay? So it would be north 45 degrees east. That defines its strike. That again is the line of intersection between this horizontal plane, and again, just think of flooding the area with water, and where that water intersects the top of this bed, okay, and that horizontal surface of that water surface, okay, that is your line of strike. Determining what the angle of that is relative to true north, that determines the line of strike in its given direction. The dip is the measurement going down from this horizontal surface, again think your water surface, down to the surface of your feature, in this case this bed at the top of this block of tilted rocks. Okay? And in this case that dip angle is 30 degrees. The dip angle is always measured perpendicular to the strike, in other words at 90 degrees. So the dip perpendicular to the strike is 30 degrees okay, in that given direction. So that's referred to as the strike in the dip of a geologic feature. Okay? And we can see this done on faults, we can see it done on tilted beds, we can see it done on folds, and um, that's basically how geologists use that information. You'll see an example of that here in a moment. Okay, so in this next view, what you're looking at is a geologic map view up in this part of the diagram, and down below is the block diagram of what's going on. And what we have is a sequence of folds that come through this area. Okay? Things called subsurface hills, which are anticlines, and it comes down to a subsurface valley, which is a syncline, and then back up towards what would be another anticline if we kept going. Okay? As we look up here at the map, if we were you know, actually mapping this in two dimensions, we'd show the location of each one of these beds. Okay, we have a red shale over here, we have a red shale repeating over here, here we have a limestone, here we have the, the, the limestone again, we have the sandstone and so forth. But you'll notice on the sandstone units, it's also indicating what the strike of these beds is, going this way, in this case the strike of this sandstone unit, again this way, and what the dip of those beds are, 30 degrees, you know, if this was oriented more or less north-south, this is east over here and west over here. This thing is dipping approximately, oh, I don't know, <clears throat> north 10 degrees west. If this is north, that would be a little bit west of north. And the dip angle is going 30 degrees off in a westerly direction. Over here, again, we have a slightly different dip, but a much, excuse me, a much different, a much similar strike and a significantly different dip. Okay, so the strike again is going more or less this way. The dip is going this way, but is significantly higher at 85 degrees. Over here, the strike going this way again, and the dip going back in a westerly direction. 
Okay. So that's how we use that to actually symbolize what's going on relative to how these beds are oriented in space out in the real world on a geologic map. Okay. Okay, this is a depiction of one of those types of geologic features that are associated with, in this case, plastic deformation. Okay, we have a fold. We have what's referred to as an anticline in this case. Okay, the anticline has two limbs dipping away from the top hinge line, which is up here. That's basically what the the crest of a ridge is. What's being shown here. And when we discuss these things, we often talk about them relative to an axial plane, which is a plane that is vertical that penetrates down through the center part of the top of that hinge line. It's vertical going, um, well, in this case, it's vertical. Uh, it's basically cutting this thing in, in half. You'll notice that each of the limbs of this fold, of this anticline, are dipping away from the axial plane and the hinge line in opposite directions. Okay. This anticline is one that would just go on almost indefinitely through an area and its ridge or its hinge line, excuse excuse me, would basically be a horizontal ridge that ran along excuse me, the top of that structure. There are other cases where because the area is, isn't just being compressed from this direction and from that direction to give the fold, it's being compressed here and here, but also the system is being tilted. This forms something called a plunging anticline. So rather than the you know, hinge line forming a nice little ridge that goes all through your area, the hinge line is actually plunging down into the subsurface. Okay? It's just another type of one of these anticlinal folds. Okay? Plunging folds. Again, so the, the hinge line is actually plunging or dipping away from this horizontal line as the hinge line follows that horizontal line up here, and it plunges down into the subsurface, again, because not only is this thing being compressed, but there's also something that's causing one end to be lifted relative to the other, and that horizontal, that, excuse me, anticline or pole system is you know, actually plunging down into the subsurface. Okay, um, classifying anticlines. Okay, first of all, remember anticlines are these hill features where we have the hinge lines. Okay, up in this area, forming the nice uh, ridge line that goes through an area, uh, the tops of the hills, and it dips down into what's referred to as a little valley feature called a syncline. Now, when we're classifying anticlines, they can come in different classes, and there's a whole different, uh, a whole sequence of different ways in which they classify these things. But what I want you to be familiar with is where we have what's referred to as a symmetrical fold, and basically both limbs are dipping equally away from your hinge line up here at the at the crest of this anticline on either on either side of the top of the anticline. When we come over to this one, we notice that it's asymmetrical. This limb isn't dipping as uh, steeply as this limb is. Okay, this limb is dipping much more, uh, dipping much more steeply. And when you have what's referred to as a overturned limb, this is where this limb comes up to the top of the anticline. So your, your hinge line is up in here. The axial plane is now highly tilted. It's basically coming down through this area, and this thing is almost, you know, overturned into the horizontal nature. So one limb comes up, quickly turns around, and comes down the other side very quickly before it continues on its way. So symmetrical, nice even form. Dips are both are uh, equal on both sides of the hinge line, the crest of your anticline. In a uh, asymmetrical fold, one side the dip is shallower than it is on the other side. It's much more steeply dipped over here. In the case of an overturned anticline or an overturned fold, both of these limbs, um, well this limb over here actually starts to turn over on, it, on top of itself. Okay. okay, well guess what? I'm back to that magical 10 minute mark, so I'm going to quit here and I'll be back in a moment.